Hey guys, I'm going to be starting day four of Glory Be, um, which is going to be chapter seven. So today I'm only reading one chapter because it's a really long chapter. Okay, so as I'm reading today, I want you thinking about important events. I want you to think about what's happening in the story right now and making a prediction for what might happen next. So after you watch this video, you're going to click the Google form that's on the same assignment on your Google Classroom. So you click the video, then you're going to click the Google form, and you're going to fill it out by typing in or by selecting the most important events from this chapter. Remember, an important event in the story is an event that if we took it out, the rest of the story wouldn't make sense. So we will want events in there that aren't really important. So keep that in mind. If you have paper at home or a sticky note or an envelope or something to write on, I would grab a pencil really quick or a pen and something to write on. So pause the video real quick and go grab pencil or pen and something to write on, like a piece of paper or an envelope, sticky note, something, so that you can keep track of the most important events. Because I'll be stopping when I'm reading and say, why do you think this was important? And we'll talk through it and so that you can write those down to help keep track of your learning. Okay, so I'm starting chapter 7, which is on page 33 of Glory B. Chapter 7, Here's What's Broken. The next morning, before anybody woke up, I pulled on my blue shorts and t-shirt from yesterday, and I tiptoed downstairs to talk to Emma. She was already singing and humming to herself what sounded like a churchy song. Emma might have been old enough to be my mama, but she wasn't much taller than me and her singing voice was high and tinkly. I stopped for a minute outside the kitchen door to listen. I dearly loved hearing Emma sing. What are you doing? I asked. Emma smiled. Cooking biscuits, with bacon like always. She took the bacon out of the ice box. Where are you off to today, honey? She asked. I chewed on a hangnail I'd been working on all week. I wanted to go swimming, but Jocelyn's acting ugly, so maybe she won't let me come with her. Besides, what if the pool's already closed? Emma didn't answer. She just went back to turning the bacon in her black skillet. I twirled my ponytail and stared at a speck of dust at our red tabletop. My Nancy Drew book sat open to the chapter we'd been reading yesterday. I opened and shut it to the rhythm of Emma's quiet humming. Emma, you think something's really broken at the pool? I flipped the book cover back and forth. She got quiet before she answered. What's broken is that some folks don't seem to like anything changing. Everything's got to stay the same in this part of town, she said. I bet nobody's ever thought about it's just as hot over where I live as it is where you live. Somebody ought to be fixing that broken down slab of concrete that they call a swimming pool near me. I shut my book. Emma didn't usually say stuff about her side of town and my side of town. I never even considered how she might not have a nice place to cool off. I loved our community pool. My pool. I like to call it. My pool had a snack bar, lounge chairs, swimming lessons, and lifeguards. And I'd had my July 4th birthday party at my pool most every year since I could swim. If I could remember back far enough, I even pictured my mama holding me while I put my face in the water for the very first time. I started to ask more about Emma's pool, but when she poked a long fork into the bacon like she was spearing something hateful, I swallowed my questions. So we're going to stop there for a second. Something important has happened. Emma and Glory are talking about what they're going to do, and Glory says she wants to go swimming. But she's asking, you know, do you think the pool is really broken? And Emma says what's broken is that people don't want things changing. We can infer, based on what we know about the South in this time, that what she means by that is that segregation is changing and that it's starting to become illegal to segregate people based on if they're black or white. So when Emma says that, um, that some people don't want things changing and that's really what's broken, Glory starts thinking, you know, I never thought about her side of town and my side of town. She's only really thought about her side of town with her pool that's got a snack bar and lifeguards and all of these things. And from what we know from reading Martin Luther King Jr., we know that usually the black pool or the black fountain and those things weren't usually kept up as well as the white ones. So we can infer that Emma's side of town and her pool 
like she said, that torn up slab of concrete that they call a pool isn't nearly as nice as Glory's. So the important thing here is that Emma and Glory are talking about the differences between the two sides of town because now it has Glory thinking about places and things other than just herself. And it says that Emma poked the bacon like she was spearing something hateful, which means she didn't like talking about those differences. It probably didn't make her feel really good to talk about how her side of town and the people that she lives with, her neighbors and her family, they don't have nice things like Glory's family does. And that might make her feel a little bad or a little hateful even that it's just based on if they're black or white that um, they have those different things. So that's the important event is that Glory and Emma start talking about the differences between the two sides of town. I'm not sure you'd have to keep looking. There's Chase looking for Paw Patrol. I'm gonna write it down on my list. Glory and Emma talk about the differences in their parts of town. And that's our first important event that we're keeping track of today. So I'm gonna keep reading, page 35. Frankie showed up just when the bacon was cooling on the kitchen table. He'd come right through the back door and made himself at home. Frankie, do you hear bacon sizzling all the way down Church Street? I asked him. Can just about smell it, he answered. He pushed his red hair off of his forehead and straightened his glasses. It smells good. Here, have yourself one. Emma handed us toasted biscuits with bacon inside. Frankie and me sat on the back steps eating biscuits and licking butter off of our fingers, being quiet together like we do sometimes. That's one. Then I got an idea. No. Go play. Hey, Emma, can the girl I met at the library come to supper one night? I called out. Emma could hear me through the screen door. Who'd you meet? Frankie asked, stuffing the last bite into his mouth. A girl visiting from Ohio, I said. Her name's Laura. She likes Nancy Drew books like me and Emma. Miss Bloom asked Laura and me to do story times together at the library. She says she doesn't have one single friend here, except me now. Frankie leaned in and talked quiet so I could barely hear him. Wonder if she's one of those troublemakers in town from up north, he said. Here living with the coloreds, trying to make them vote. Daddy says those long-haired hippies should stay where they belong. Plenty of people up north need help. And we're going to stop there for our next important event. So, Laura is sitting with Frankie and they're eating their snack and she calls out to Emma and says, hey, can Laura come over, or Glory, sorry, can Laura come over for dinner sometime? And Frankie's like, well, who's that? And she's telling him that she's from Ohio. And Frankie knows that Ohio is up north. And he says, I wonder if she's one of those troublemakers in town. So we can infer that Frankie and his daddy and his family think that those people that are coming down, the freedom workers, are bad are bad news. And so our next important event is that Glory invite asks Emma to invite Laura to dinner and that Frankie doesn't like it. What? Can you help me turn Frankie's car? It doesn't. Just his feet. No, it does. Not on this one. Yeah. Not on this one. One. No. Um, you're lying. It's That's just true. stuck like rubble. I'm working later. Go on. So I'm going to write my next important event. Glory asks Emma if Laura can come over for dinner. Remember, you should be writing this down somewhere too so you can keep track. And Frankie thinks she's bad news. And so we know that Frankie and Gloria are best friends. And now Gloria and Laura are best friends. 
and we're thinking, well, Frankie doesn't seem like he likes Laura, even though he's never met her, just based on where she moved from and the fact that her mom is works at the Freedom Clinic. So we can think, start predicting that there might be some trouble there between those two. Frankie's daddy is the James in Bill and James Wild West wear and clothing emporium downtown. Besides selling cowboy hats and fancy boots and telling Frankie what to think, Mr. Smith was up once upon a time a big football hero. He still has old pictures and even his jerseys from a zillion years ago hanging all over his store. For your information, Frankie, I stood up and looked right at him. My new friend's not a troublemaker, and she's not living with any colored people. She's here with her mama, Laura Lampert, that's her name. Laura and me went for a walk, and I showed her the pee pool and the playground and all. We might make us a lanyard or a friendship bracelet at the park tomorrow. No use telling Frankie about the drinking fountains. I didn't want to give him another reason to not like Laura. Frankie scrunched up his face and looked hard at a pile of red ants next to the steps. What he said next made my stomach knot up. I hate Yankees. You better be careful, Glory. My daddy says that they are trouble. Between his daddy and big mean brother JT, somebody's always trying to tell Frankie what to think. Half the time I wonder if Frankie's scared to death of JT and his own daddy. Does your daddy even know this girl from Ohio? I asked. Frankie didn't answer my question. I sat down again and glared, daring him to say one more thing about Laura. So, Glory thinks that Frankie only hates Yankees and hates people from up north and all this change because that's what his daddy has told him and that's what his big brothers told him. So, another important event is that Frankie tells uh, Glory, I hate Yankees. So we know that he's not going to like Laura because he thinks that she's going to start causing trouble. So, and it seems like Frankie and Glory are kind of getting in an argument now where Glory's like, you don't even know her. You've never even met her. And um, Frankie is already making a determination that he doesn't like Laura based on where she moved from. So our next important event is that Glory and Frankie get in an argument over Laura. So we're going to think about how that might shape the rest of the story. All those outsiders here in town might try to make us swim with colored children and go to school with them. Daddy swears he'll yank me and JT out of school if a colored person's in my class. About that time, Jesslyn appeared at the back door, and even as quiet as Frankie talked, she'd heard him. She marched herself in front of us on the steps. Just because somebody talks a little different doesn't mean you can't be nice to them. Jesslyn pointed her pink painted fingernail at Frankie and then at me. You think the world would come to an end if you had somebody not exactly like you sit beside you in school next year? We know plenty of different people. We don't mind sitting next to them. I didn't like Jesslyn thinking that Frankie was hateful or stupid, but he was sure acting that way. Jesslyn looked hard at him. Some people in this town, your brother included, need to learn a thing or two about getting along with people. And she stormed inside. Frankie, what you said, that was about the dumbest thing I've ever heard of. Not going to school just because of someone who's sitting next to you? What about me and Donnie Drake who steals your homework? Or Kenny? He's been in our class since kindergarten, and he smells like a billy goat and picks his nose. But you sit next to him. Frankie wiped butter off his fingernails onto his t-shirt and then shrugged his shoulders at me. It's not the same. Because they're white? Is that what your daddy thinks? Frankie ignored that. What's that girl doing in the town library anyhow? Daddy says pretty soon they'll, ge they'll be letting just anybody come in there. Frankie stood up and brushed the crumbs off his t-shirt. Why do you even like that Yankee, he asked. I told you, her name is Laura, I said. Call her by her name. She's nice, and we both love Nancy Drew books, and she needs a friend. She stays at the library while her mother's a nurse working somewhere out in the highway. At least that's what Miss Bloom told me. What I didn't tell was about Laura's mother running that clinic. 
helping poor people who didn't have any such thing as a doctor or a nurse. And if Miss Bloom says there are people who need this Freedom Clinic thing, well, whatever it is, then it's true. I like knowing somebody from Ohio, I said. My brother claims that they talk and dress funny and that those freedom people try to make people do stuff that they shouldn't. Freedom people? Wasn't freedom something good? What was Frankie talking about? But before he could tell me another lie that his brother or his daddy swore was the gospel truth, my daddy pushed open the back screen door. I'm going over to the church, he announced. See you in a while, Glory. Thank you for having me to breakfast, Brother Joe. I sure do love Miss Emma's biscuits. Even when he wasn't exactly invited, Frankie still remembered his manners. You're welcome any time. Oh, and Glory, uh, did I overhear you talking about the visitor girl you met at the library just now? Invited her supper, won't you? You and Jess Lynn can get to know people from other places. And then Daddy headed across the street to the church. I'll invite Laura Lambert to supper. I smiled real nice at Frankie. My sister and I will know somebody from far off. That is, if Jesslyn would pull herself away from her new boyfriend long enough to pay me any, to pay me any never mind. Or stop believing that trying out lipsticks with Mary Louise is more fun than playing junk poker with me. Then maybe Jesslyn would think having my new friend from Ohio over here to supper was fun. Frankie let out a big sigh. My daddy's going to be so mad, he said, and he scooted home, kicking a rock halfway down the block. My brother's going to beat me up for playing with somebody who likes Yankees, he yelled back to me. JT was scary, all right, and I hoped he wouldn't beat up Frankie. I truly did. But right now, I needed Frankie as much as I needed Jesslyn's fancy orange lipstick. Emma, I'll be back real soon, I hollered over my shoulder. I'm going to the library to invite Laura Lampert to supper. From inside the kitchen, Emma shut the icebox door so hard that the milk bottles rattled. So, our last important event for this chapter is that Glory invites Laura Lampert over to dinner. And we know that's important because it caused this huge argument between Glory and Frankie over whether or not she should be friends with Laura because she's from up north and because her mom is working at the Freedom Clinic. So, our last important event that I'm going to add is that Glory invites... Laura Lampert to dinner. And that is the end of this chapter. So it was a really long chapter. We got a lot of important events here. You should have one, two, three, four important events. It's going to be on our Google um, form. Okay, there's four important events that you need to answer and a prediction. So it's worth five points, five points to get a, um, a three or four. So to be successful in this assignment, you should be getting at least four or five out of those five points correct. So if you're not sure what those events are, you can rewatch the video or go back to certain parts of it. Okay. All right. I'll see you guys for next chapter.